Hello grade 10s. In this lesson, MacGyver and his teacher will look at graphs that have been altered to misrepresent data. While they discuss how the graphs are altered, I want you to think about the reasons why someone has chosen to do this. Hello? Hi, it's MacGyver. Hey MacGyver, how you doing man? Great, thanks. I'm having a problem here. I was wondering if you could help me. I have to do research for my school project uh, using newspapers, but different newspapers are showing different information in the graph. How is this possible? I'm so confused. Well, it's possible that uh, different newspapers are focusing on different parts of data. When you read data in the media, you have to be really critical and make sure that they're all using accurate representations. Some people like to show data that supports a point they want to make. So they can be biased in the way people represent data as well? That's right. The way data is represented graphically can give people a false impression about a situation. Sometimes we draw conclusions too quickly. So we really need to look at data representation more carefully before we draw a conclusion. Wow, I didn't realize that. Maybe you should come and see me and we can look at it together. Great. That would help. Can I come over now? Sure. See you soon, yeah? He said on the phone there could be bias in the way in which we represent data. What did you mean by that? Yes, that's right. It'll be easier to explain if you look at an example. Let's start by comparing these two graphs. They represent puzzle shop sales. I would like you to look at them carefully and tell me what each graph shows us about how well this puzzle shop is doing. Have a look at this one first. What do you think it shows us about the sales for this puzzle shop? Well, I think that this graph shows that the shop is not doing very well. It seems to be headed downhill. Sales are dropping every month. How about this one? This one looks all right. It looks like a solid business. The sales are around about the same every month. Well, what did you say if I told you that they're actually the sales figures of the same shop for the same time period? But they don't look the same. Why don't you take a closer look? Have a look at the figures for April. Hmm, uh, on the first graph it gives you about 13,690 rand. On the second graph it gives you Ah, uh, almost 13,700 rand. Hey, you're right. The numbers look the same, but the graphs are different. Now, how do you think such different graphs were drawn from the same information? Um, I'm not really sure. Have a look at the numbers on the vertical axis or the y-axis. Hang on, they're different. Well spotted. The scale on the vertical axis is different for each graph. Have a look at the first graph again. The vertical axis scale has exaggerated the differences between the amounts from month to month. Exaggerating the scale on a graph like this is a common technique that people use when they want to use the data for a particular purpose. In this case, you can see how effective it can be. You interpreted the graphs quite differently, although the data they represent is in fact the same. But that's not the only technique in use here. Tell me, MacGyver, what is the lowest number on the vertical axis for each graph? The second graph starts at zero. And the first graph starts at... Uh, 13,500. It doesn't start at zero. Does that make a difference? Yes. Look at how stretched out the numbers are. Even though the cells decrease, the changes are actually only a couple of hundred rands per month. This graph makes you think that this shop is heading for disaster. How would you decide which graph is better? Um, I'm not sure. I suppose it would depend on the situation. Correct. There are some situations in which you need to see small differences between the amounts of money. So it is not wrong not to have the zero on the graph. But we need to be aware of how the graph is drawn. It's the responsibility of the person reading the graph to make sure that they interpret the information correctly. But graphs should always be labeled clearly so that we're less likely to draw the wrong conclusion. 
But why would anyone want to misrepresent the sales of a business? Well, there are some possibilities. If someone wanted to buy the shop for a lower price, they could use the first graph to show that the price of the business is too high because sales are going down. Another person could use the second graph to show that the business has a steady income and is therefore a good investment. Let's look at another example. Here are another two graphs showing sales over a different period of time. The owner wants to get a bank loan to expand her business. So she needs to convince the bank that her business is doing well. Which of these two graphs would create a better impression? I'd say the first graph. But what is it that makes this graph more impressive? For me, I think it's the slope of the graph that makes the difference. That's it exactly. It's the slope in the first graph that makes it appear more impressive. The first graph seems to show a sharp increase in sales over the last six months. The steep positive slope implies that things are really improving quickly. And the second one is flatter. It shows an increase, but it's not as convincing. However, if you worked out the values of the slopes, you would find out that they are the same. But what makes them look different, do you know? I think I've got it. Look, the horizontal axis has been stretched. The months are spaces further apart on the second graph. You're quite sharp. Now, there are other ways that graphs can mislead readers. Take a look at these representations. There are three competing cell phone companies. I've called them A, B, and C. Company A wanted to release statistics showing that they were the most popular company based on sales. They chose to use this representation. It's supposed to show that the company sells twice the number of cell phones as its next competitor. Do you think that they have represented that clearly here? Okay, so you say that company A sells twice as much as its nearest competitor. Then I would say this is not really well represented. The difference between company A and company B looks much more than double. That's right. People use this technique to make differences in numbers look more significant than they really are. In this case, company A has misused three-dimensional representations to exaggerate the differences between its own sales figures and those of its competitors. But I don't understand. How can company A sales be more than double company B sales? How do you use numbers to lie using pictures? A bar graph uses height to show differences in values. Adding volume to the bars makes them look bigger because our eyes look at the overall size. But we should remember that the height of each bar is the only thing we should look at. A simple bar graph like this would give a more correct picture. Now if you think this was misleading, have a look at this next technique. This graph shows that crime has decreased over a three month period. There is nothing misleading about the actual information shown or the scale and the slope is not an issue either. The zero is shown and there are no gaps on the axis. It looks perfectly fine to me. The heading of the graph says, Incidents of armed robbery show decrease in crime rate in suburb A. It definitely looks like there was a decrease in crime. Well, it might look fine at first glance, but this graph is actually very misleading. There are two issues with this graph. Firstly, it doesn't show the whole picture. What do you mean? Let me show you the statistics for the whole year. The graph shows only the results of months with data that supports the case. Selecting only part of the data has created a false impression of success. And, in fact, if you look at the data for the whole year, the number of crimes has increased overall. Can you see what the other issue is? Well, I also saw that that data is out of date. Statistics on crime might have changed since then. Yes. That brings me to my second point. Statistical data should be up to date. Crime stats for this year would show more accurately what has happened with the crime rate recently than these figures do. All right, so we also have to check that the statistics are fresh. You could put it that way, or at least you could check to see if the date for the statistics is appropriate for the conclusion you're supposed to draw from the data. We have to check so many things. How will I remember? <laughs> Shall we recap on what you noticed this lesson? Good idea, my head is spinning. 
Firstly, we need to remember that all statistics are collected and represented with a particular purpose in mind. Just as there can be bias in collecting data, so the way data is represented can also be misleading. We found that the scale of the axis can cause a number of problems. One of the problems could be the slope of the graph. By stretching or compressing the scale of the vertical or horizontal axis, we can modify the slope to create an exaggerated impression of rapid or slow growth. Another clever trick is to use three-dimensional effects to mislead readers into believing that differences are bigger or smaller than the real data. We also discussed how the selection of part of a graph can mislead readers by excluding negative information. The last thing to remember is that statistics are supposed to help us make decisions. When we have old data, then it's possible that we are going to draw conclusions that do not apply to the present situation. This has certainly made me think twice about the graphs I look at. Thank you for joining us for this lesson. Please check for useful tasks in the data handling task video. You will also be able to learn more about data handling on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.